It landed in the world's most forbidding jungle. The ultimate hunter in search of his favorite prey. Now, he's coming to a different kind of jungle. Oh, is he here? This is the first time I heard about it. The predator is in L.A. Well, that should be interesting with people that we have around here. The predators have always chosen heat and conflict uh, where, the, where the action is, where the danger is. It's a downtown Los Angeles of the future. It's a tough city where gangs are fighting in the streets, where drugs have become the, the bartering money. You know, this creature realizes that this is a place to party. This is hot stuff in the city. Hey! You okay? Hey, let's get the rest of them. He can't. He just got orders from Chief Item, and he says, secure perimeter, surround building, and wait. Wait, wait for what? Right now, we're trying to kill all the Colombians to get into, into their headquarters and see what's going on. Once we arrive there, we see all these, like, like really icky, disgusting, like, people dead with, you know, everything, like, the worst. But we don't know it's the predator who did it. You don't know what you're dealing with. He is not going around Los Angeles mindlessly killing people. He's a sportsman. He's a hunter. He comes from a race of hunters. And he's found the greatest hunter of man there is on the planet. And that's in the form of the policeman that Danny Glover plays. And he goes to hunt him. Three, two, one. <laughs> Certainly what attracted me to the role was the idea of, of, of fighting this mythical, um, otherworldly being. He got tired of the rumble that he had in the jungle. And so I guess in L.A. he did stumble. I, I think he'd come here for the girls. Erica was out with him just the other day in L.A. Visually, the movie is, is one of these films that is going to really pull the audience in and make them feel like they're just behind us. It's not a comic book world. It's a very real world. It's a mystery. It's a science fiction story. It's an action movie. And I think everyone will be surprised. <laughs> Predator 2. Hunting season opens again this Christmas. Los Angeles, 1997. Record heat, choking pollution, rampant crime. An elite team of inner city cops battle gangs for control of the streets. It has not been a nice day. As bad as things are, they're about to get worse. Much worse. In the 20th Century Fox production, Predator 2. I think Harrigan, he lives in a rough time, a rough period, and he says, these are my streets, and, and I want to know what's going on. We got a survivor. If the Colombians did all this, then why'd they leave their boss, Ramon, over there hanging tan and his girlfriend naked on the floor? It wasn't the Colombians. Our friend from the armory. Right. We got a new player in town. The Predator is attracted to this kind of atmosphere of violence and heat. He's a hunter. He comes from a race of hunters. The Harrigan's first assumption is that this is something that got him loose from the military. This is what took him up to the rafters. There's almost no weight. But it cuts like steel. The character's a bit more dangerous than anything I've done. It gave me a chance to be a little bit more athletic and nicer. <laughs> My character, Peter Keyes, has been on the Predator's trail for 15 years. I got something you might find interesting. What is this? How many times do I have to tell you? You don't know what you're dealing with. There's your killer. Wonderful, isn't it? 
pheromone signature left by his body. These are scent molecules. We're going in after another world life force from another galaxy that has a self-defense mechanism that we don't understand. His mentality is that there is a target that he's locked into, and he's going to go get it. Maria Conchita Alonso plays Officer Leona Cantrell. Mike, you okay? Right now, we're trying to kill all the Colombians to get into, into their headquarters and see what's going on. Once we arrive there, we see all these, like, like really icky, disgusting, like, people dead. But we don't know it's the predator who did it. Mike, this is a dead end. We're way out of our league. My character, I'm this tough cookie, like a tomboy. Drop it and sit down. So the predator is after the, the strong people. I'm Ruben Blades, and I'm playing Danny Archuleta. I want a name on this joke. You got it. The predator is also serving the uh, action. He's just watching people committing acts of violence. And I think then that he will determine whose life it's going to take, just at random. Whoever did this took out four men armed with machine guns by hand. The Predator kills out of a sporting desire. I play Detective Jerry Lambert. I'm kind of referred to in the story as the Billy the Kid of the Rampart Division. Metro Command is a war zone. Lieutenant, I paid my dues. There's no room for showboats for anyone looking to prove himself. He really doesn't know what he's up against. Look, it's my specialty. He thinks it's some psycho with this secret weaponry. <laughs> Stephen Hopkins, director of Nightmare on Elm Street 5, brings a unique visual style to Predator 2. Then you have all of a sudden he goes, huh! Oh. He can see it coming, huh? It's a different story, a different type of movie. It's not just a horror movie, it's a detective story, it's a mystery, it's a science fiction story, it's an action movie, and it crosses over into a lot of different genres. We disarm him to camera, okay. i.e., that camera. Oh, yeah. The colors are extraordinary. It's very muted, it's very hot, it's very dusty. But it's not, uh, it's not trying to look glamorous, the film. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I think everyone will be surprised by every twist and turn that this film takes. It's going to nail him to the seats. It's frightening, it's unsettling. One of the scariest movies I've ever seen. There are a lot of surprises. You invited Oprah, you're gonna have a ball. Predator 2, he's in town with a few days to kill. <laughs>heat camera basically what we're doing here is we are the predator's eyeball the predator's not around but we've got his eyeball right here and that's how the predator sees he sees infrared heat this predator is a real nasty creature and he's sitting up here on the roof of this building looking down on these people this is the thermographic camera that we just saw on the roof what we do with this imagery we process it we colorize it and we put it back to film to show you the Predator's point of view. We prepared a little trap for this Predator. 
from the Predators attracted to this kind of atmosphere of violence and heat. He's right behind you. He sees the damn light. Turn him off. Turn him off. Jump him off. One of the fantasies we had is what would this, what would this camouflage effect look like? What would the predator look like in an urban environment like you know, the city? So why can't we see him? Defensive adaptations are astounding. It's somehow able to bend light. The perfect camouflage. Quiet, everybody, real quiet, please. It's a spaceship housing our predator, a very functional, smart, strong alien craft, very much like the predator itself, you know, mimicking its, you know, movements and camouflage. What do I know about the predator? I know it scared the hell out of me when we were setting up for this scene. This particular mask that the predator wears is part of his armament, part of his weaponry. He's a hunter. He comes from a race of hunters. There's almost no weight. But it cuts like steel. This predator has more weapons to play with. He's come with more toys. Everyone knows who the predator is if they saw the first picture but they don't necessarily know everything this predator can do, and they certainly cannot predict what happens in this film. Uh, guess who's back? is back. <laughs>